Hello everybody! Sorry I haven't done a vlog in a while. I've been distracted by many things over the past few weeks, like March Madness and WrestleMania and trying to finish up the Ninja Turtles review. But now I actually have time to talk about a movie I saw recently, and that movie is Unfriended. The story for this one is this girl named Blair and her boyfriend and four of their friends get together one night for a Skype chat, and the entire movie takes place in real time on Blair's computer screen. And at some point during their chat, they are seemingly hacked by this unknown account over Skype, and a lot of weird shit starts happening. They eventually figure out that this account somehow belongs to their deceased friend, Laura, who committed suicide about a year ago after a rather unflattering video was posted on YouTube and she was bullied over it. And now she has come back from the dead to seek vengeance through their computers. Because why not? Now, my initial reaction to the trailers for this movie, which highlighted its rather unconventional nature, basically a movie that takes place entirely in a Skype conversation, I thought, you know, this looks kind of stupid. I mean, it's a neat idea, but it's probably not going to work. But much to my surprise, this started getting some pretty good reviews from the critics. I mean, they haven't been overwhelmingly positive or anything, but the fact that they were positive at all led me to think, you know, maybe there is actually something to this. And now that I have seen the movie, I really don't know what the critics saw in this one. I don't. It's, it's not very good. It's not. This movie happens entirely in real time. Supposedly, the final cut of this movie was all one take. Just no, no cuts anywhere in there, just one continuous take with a lot of ad-libbing. And honestly, I can believe it. And the first 15 minutes of this movie are just absolutely unbearable. In fact, it's unbearable before the movie officially really gets going. As soon as the Universal logo kicks up and that familiar music starts playing, da 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 And then all of a sudden it starts distorting and buffering while it's playing the Universal logo. And this wasn't a glitch in the movie theater. This is actually how the movie begins. Just to really drive home the point that this movie is taking place on someone's crappy internet connection. And as soon as that happened, I thought, oh no. No, 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 no. This... This is gonna be a long sit. And then when the movie gets going proper, the first 15 minutes or so are just awful. It's all it is is a Skype conversation between Blair and her boyfriend with some of the most cringe-inducing dialogue that I have ever heard. And it's I, I can believe this was ad-libbed, and it was ad-libbed by people who should not be ad-libbing ever. Oh god, no. There there's one point in the conversation where the boyfriend starts threatening her with a machete. Not for real, of course, he's just playing around, but, but why he has a machete, I have no idea. But anyway, at, at some point during this conversation, Blair actually says, you know, you're kind of sexy when you're violent. I, I'm sorry, what? Oh, okay, so we got a future abuse victim here. That's, that's nice. Uh, oh, dear. And then everybody else jumps into the conversation, but still, it's not until... It was probably about the 30-minute mark when stuff actually started to happen. And until then, it's just a bunch of dumb teenagers doing a bunch of dumb teenage shit and saying a bunch of dumb teenage shit. And it's every bit as exciting as it sounds. One of the really weird things about this movie is it takes place entirely within technology but the people who made it don't seem to fully understand how that technology works. A good chunk of the movie takes place within a Skype conversation, and except when the ghost actually wants something bad to happen, it never crashes and nothing ever goes wrong with it, and that's a red flag right there. If you've ever used Skype, you know what I mean. That is not a stable program. But for some strange reason, during several points within the Skype conversation, Blair will, like, go to a different window for either a 
text chat or to check someone's Facebook page or a website. And whenever the Skype window moves to the background, the audio from Skype suddenly mutes. Just automatically. Which I know does not happen in real life. And it magically unmutes itself whenever it is convenient for the plot for Blair to come back into the conversation. What? And this movie has a lot of pacing issues. It's only 82 minutes long, and yet it does have a tendency to drag. And when your movie is that short, it should not drag at all. Ever. But boy, does this movie drag. The director appears to know that you can build suspense by working at a slow pace, but he doesn't really seem to know how to properly apply this technique. Really, the only times this movie slows down, it seems like it's doing so just to pad out the running time. There are times when people are w trying to watch videos on YouTube, and the video keeps pausing and buffering, and it just takes so goddamn long to watch this little 30-second video, and I'm just sitting there thinking, get the fuck on with it already. And at one point, the ghost that's haunting them sends them a photo, and you have to wait for the photo to download, and everyone in the movie is just sitting there watching this progress bar slowly move along for no other reason than because I guess it makes it look realistic. Kind of, but it certainly doesn't make it exciting. And I'm just sitting there in the theater going, yeah, come on. Download the fucking file already, and then the next <laughs> file that they download is twice the size of that one and downloads instantly. Like, fuck you, movie! And another problem with this movie, and this is a problem a lot of horror movies have, and you'd think they would have learned by now, all of the characters are assholes. All of them. All of them. Every single fucking one of these kids is a backstabbing, gossiping piece of shit. There's a better title for this movie would have been Sociopath. That would have fit better. And even the supposed victim in all of this, the, uh, the Laura character, the one who committed suicide, according to the other characters in this movie, she was apparently a bully herself, so that, that takes away some sympathy for her. So there's no one to feel sympathy for by the time this movie is over. There's a point in the movie where the ghost forces them all to play a game of Never Have I Ever, and... I guess to do that, they all have to hold up five fingers, and every time they answer incorrectly, they have to drop a finger. Although, during this scene, uh, Blair is away from the Skype chat, uh, typing a conversation with her boyfriend through Skype Instant Messenger, and she is typing remarkably well for one-handed. It's almost as if she was actually using two hands, and the director has no idea what the fuck he's doing. But anyway, they, they just get into the most pointless argument about the most pointless shit over and over uh, all of these friends and god i just want to punch every single one of them e even the one drunk asshole with the gun i i don't care i'm going to punch him if i have to risk getting shot so be it he needs to be punched i will do it and not only are they assholes they're incredibly stupid the ghost pretty much spells out for all of them exactly what they have to do to survive. Be honest. Tell the truth. That's all they have to do. And of course, the point of this is the ghost wants the people responsible for the video that ultimately led to her suicide to confess. And that's all they have to do. And they cannot follow this simple fucking task. Sad. Really, the gimmick with the entire movie taking place in a Skype chat is about the only thing this movie has going for it. If you take that away, it's just another bland haunting movie. That's really all it is. And, you know, the medium could be replaced with anything. This ghost could be talking to them through someone's cell phone or through a TV or a fucking Ouija board, it wouldn't matter. You could change that to anything else and it would still be the exact same movie. And that's really the problem. It's just a bland horror movie that happens to take place on a Skype chat. And, you know, while this is a unique idea, I will give the movie that, it doesn't always work to the movie's favor. Parts of this movie take place within the Skype chat and other parts take place with a basic text instant messaging chat, either through Skype or through Facebook, 
Parts of it involve, you know, going to Spotify and playing certain songs. Parts of it involve going to websites. It's every bit as riveting as it sounds, really. It just, it does not make for an entertaining movie at all. Really, the only positive thing I can say about the movie is the acting was okay. Nothing to write home about, but it was okay. It was competent, at least. But that's it. Honestly, I think this would have been better served as a short film because there's just not enough here to stretch out to 82 minutes. And boy, was this a long 82 minutes. Ugh. So in case you haven't deduced this already, my final verdict is don't bother with this one. It's not very good. It's just... It's really not worth seeing at any price. I honestly can't even recommend catching it on cable when it starts hitting that rotation. Just don't bother with it at all. There are much better movies out there you could be seeing right now. Just see anything but Unfriended. Anything. Except maybe Paul Blart 2, because I've heard that's really bad. But anything else, apart from Unfriended and Paul Blart 2, see anything. And that's about all I have to say. So until next time, take care. Are you